Nights with a high near 55. Weather Today is sponsored by Ashworth Vision Clinic, providing personalized eye care for every patient from infants to senior citizens. Learn more at ashworthvision.com. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, inviting you to encounter Jesus. Listener-supported Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM KWKY, Des Moines, 94.5 FM K233BT, Des Moines, 88.5 FM KIHS, Adel, online anytime at iowacatholicradio.com. Man Up, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. And now, it's time to Man Up. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. I am Joe Stopulus, and today we are going to dive into our first couple interview on the great or heroic marriage series as we get this thing kicked off with Dan and Jenny Nielsen. Let us start in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So going forward, you know, we've kind of set the stage here um, on the importance of marriage and maybe how marriage is under attack. And, you know, last week with John Bishop, uh, he kind of laid out this, you know, going back to the industrial revolution and then working through to the digital revolution and how this has changed marriage. How this has changed um, the foundation of which society was built on this, this great sacrament of marriage. So going forward, uh, I'm going to have many interviews with with couples who I've gotten to know over these years um, who I look up to, uh, people who I believe have uh, great marriages. And obviously, no marriage is perfect. They are, everyone has struggles. Everyone has hard times. But the hope is that we will be able to um, see these marriages and we will be able to learn something from them. So Dan and Jenny Nielsen, Dan and Jenny Nielsen um, are, are parishioners here, uh, local here in Des Moines. Uh, good friends of mine, and they are a very holy couple, four children, um, and they've done it. Like, I think there's some, there is a level of I love to mar- uh, to uh, to talk to people who have children who are now ad- adults, right? Who have seen. Um, I, I I always struggle. People are like, "Hey, Joe, you have mar- you have like a parenting advice." I'm like, I don't know. I can like tell you what I do, but I don't know if it's going to work yet. Like, I don't know what the products. I mean, I'm, they, my kids might be horrible by the time they're 18. I have no idea. So with that uh, with that in mind, I'm humble enough to understand that. Uh, I want to look at people who who have loving, joyful marriages today. People who have had who've been through um, the 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 how arduous it is to raise children uh, and to come out with uh, great, happy, healthy marriages on the other side of that. Again, I think uh, as much as I do, there are great young couples here in Des Moines that I look up to. Um, there is I get a lot out of these these people who I know. Uh, and there's a reason I look up. There's a reason I, I ask. This is not just on the radio show. I do this all the time. I do this anytime I'm around someone who I who I think. Um, has has something that I want, right? So meaning I, I look up to them and I'm, I'm trying to mirror what they're doing or, or look up to them as an example. Uh, and, and Dan and Jenny are, are an example of that. And there are many others. You're going to hear over the course of months, many other people who are just like them. Um, and hopefully throughout the series, we'll be able to to glean some of these insights from them. So stick, or, stick around. We're going to head to short break and we'll be right back. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio. Located in Des Moines, offering PH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer, and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. Iowa Catholic Radio needs you, whether it's assisting with events, answering the phone, being a parish ambassador, or simply a commitment to pray. Iowa Catholic Radio depends on you to help connect listeners to Christ. Email contact at iowacatholicradio.com to get involved. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Moving into our heroic marriages series. Not saying you guys have a heroic marriage, but it feels like you have to now because you're on the show. <laughs> Dan and Jenny Nielsen, one of the great one of the great marriages in the Des Moines area. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Jump on in. <laughs> it's, wow. it's great nice. to have you guys on. Um, yeah, I thought of this theory series idea. You guys were top of mind. Um, you know, I we have a little overla- overlap in that uh, as a as a friend of the Flattery family. 
Uh, I'm also in a Teams of Our Lady with them, which that will come up often, I'm sure, throughout the uh, the series. You guys were mentioned by Tori to say, hey, they have, this is just an incredible couple. This I'm like, and obviously, I've, I've known you guys enough to know that she's right. We've uh, got her full job. And so I know that she's right. And we, and so, and we babysit for her. That, this, the whole thing is just, do you really? I didn't know. Well, well, Jenny does. You know who else does? Is my 11 year old does too. You got stiff competition. Stiff competition. She's, she's probably better than I. She's, uh, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. So, all right. So, the purpose of this, now we, we are entering you as my first couple interview, and I'm going to do a lot of these, is to. Give people ideas uh, of of things that have worked for other people in marriage, right? And just okay. to give us this, you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. I would say there are going to be there are going to be things that are going to be unique to you that might work for some people. There are going to be things that you know that work for Kristen and I that might not work for you. But the, I think the hope of this series is to to show the breadth of strong Catholic marriages, and people can pick and choose things that work for them out of those ideas that might that might hit. So sure. let's start with this. Okay. Do the easy stuff first. Okay? All right. Easy stuff first. How long have you guys been married? Mm-hmm. Don't blow this. Just about 31 years. Okay. November. Just about 31 yeah. years in November. Okay. Uh, of those 31 years, so, so kids, and when, when did you start having kids? You want to take that one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We started having kids. Um, well, Gabby. Just how, just how old your oldest? And then we'll do a quick subtraction. Okay. 28. So about, okay. So you had two and a half. 26. Okay, so somewhere, no, that's fine. That's good. So, yep. Okay, okay. Yep. 28, 22, 26, and 22. 20. Okay, so four yep. kids. Four kids. And about eight years there, you had about three years of no kids or thereabouts. Yeah, okay. just about. Okay. Yep. Because I, I, to, I, I, I told, I told um, John Bishop, I said, when I do marriage prep, there's some level of, I want... I want to tell you what it's like before you have kids, and then like I'll do another marriage prep for you when you have kids because these are different. <laughs> these are true. different things. Like they're very, very different true. things. Um, okay, so you had four kids, a couple mar- miscarriages in there mm-hmm. as well, um, and you've been married for for thirty one years. Let's talk about your faith throughout this time. Um, were you as strong Catholics to begin with? Like we were, like when you first got married, was it an important part of your life? Uh, ish. Maybe I would say that it was it it was important to us, but I would say it became increasingly important as we got older and as we had kids um it just grew and grew, but I wouldn't say that we were the really super great Catholics to start with we, we, <laughs> Not uh, that we are now <laughs> we, yeah we 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 grew up together uh we met in kindergarten. this is amazing, so like like the first day of kindergarten, I like literally walked into yeah. the first day of school and I saw this cute little blonde come girl. on. <laughs> Come on. True story. <laughs> that it is, is true. nuts. True and I story. spotted him and he, well, actually, I don't know if it was that day, but, but I really remember that moment where he was standing against a brick wall at the Catholic school wearing his light blue polyester leisure suit. I think it was picture day. And um, I thought he was a fox. Is this, this is, this is <laughs> in kindergarten still? I think so. Yeah. I have kindergartners. Now I'm like thinking through like, how oh my, who's the cute kid? I know. Isn't it married scary? To, which, which, which town is this in? Yeah. Fort Dodge. In Fort, in the, in the D. Okay. Yeah. So you're in Fort Dodge. You guys are in love. I'm assuming you didn't start dating uh, in no, kindergarten quite yet. No. And we, we, well, I mean, we dated uh, a lot through even grade school and high school. Hilarious. Man, okay, you guys are going to win that award for this series. I, I bought think. Jenny a, a heart-shaped locket in fifth grade from Daniel's Pharmacy. That was my first <laughs> gift to her. I still have it. And occasionally on world? our on our anniversary, I'll put it on, and about 15 <laughs> minutes later, my neck will be green, and it'll be time to take it right back. <laughs> this is, okay, yeah, you guys will win the award for longest courting <laughs> session, possible. I think. That's yeah, possible. Yeah, and so I, I guess bring that up just because our background is unique. Mm-hmm. I mean, for sure. Yeah. And then... Um, we had good Catholic families, both of us, um, went to Catholic school together and, um, my family, great Catholic family, although Jenny's family was a little bit different, I mean, just more open, mm-hmm. more evangelical Catholic, yeah. you might say, yep. um, just kind of, uh, maybe that's not the right word to put it, but, well, but, we just but, talked about things all the time. And I, I think we didn't realize that we just assumed everybody had the same upbringing that yeah. we did. But, um, I mean, you know, regular dinner conversation would include what, you know, a saint or a new miracle that somebody wanted to share or, and then we just go right into how was your day? See, this is what normal people do. I tell right, people, you just got to right. make this it normal. Is, yeah, it's very That's, normal. The reason we joined the Basilica, I mean, all sincerity is we wanted to like make this normal for our right. kids. It's like dressing up to mass, getting there early, staying late, like making it a part of your life. Like that's, we, this is normal is what normal people do this. Right. So, okay. Right. So from a young age, you guys, that was a big part of this is normalizing. Very much. Faith. And so you guys get yeah. together. I'm assuming in high school at this point, you guys are getting together yep, at some point. Sure. Okay. And then you get, you married and faith is a part of your life, but obviously we all mature as we, as we grow up. So I'm assuming now it's 
in a much more mature place than it was. I would like to believe. I would hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, I've come a long way. Yeah. I mean, I uh, for sure, uh, for me, Jenny's family was a big part of me growing in my faith. Um, just kind of because of that example we got, just kind of started showing up at, you know, and finding men's groups, finding mentors, finding people to um, to grow, clo- going on retreats which were uncomfortable probably for me at yeah. the time. But the more I went, the less uncomfortable I became. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, this, this, as I thought about this series, you know, I don't want it to be just for married people. I think I, hopefully there's going to be people that are going to think about marriage. And so right there is a, a nice little takeaway. Like you married into her family. That's one of the things you're, you cannot, you cannot take away the person that you're marrying from their family. You're marrying mm-hmm. into the family. Right, right. And for you, you married into this very authentic Catholic family mm-hmm. that then that, that normalized even more and, and pushed you further in your faith, which I think is a, is a really strong thing because I think a lot of right. people, they're only seeing the one person in front of them right. and they're taking the fact that you're getting, they're getting the baggage <laughs> but be- for better, for worse. Right. In your right. case, it was right. better. Right. You, you right. became a better person because of it. Well, I saw like her dad and, and her grandpa who were just like, they were like life goals. Like, yeah. like I want to be like them. There was something about them. That was different. There was like a calmness. There was a, and it was, it was, it was the faith and, you know, living out the faith was very joyful and fun Mm -hmm. too. That was the real attractive part to me. So in in your marriage, let's talk about, you know, how, maybe let's talk about how you guys have grown together over the years. What are some of the things you guys have, what are the practices you guys have put in place um, yeah. I gotta look at you. All, all I see is what I see in here. And you, you guys have everything seems great from the outside. I obviously know that's not true. And every, every <laughs> marriage has got their struggles and whatnot. But what are some of the things you guys have done over 31 years to, to create a, a strong marriage? Well, I would say we start off with just we never miss mass as we've gotten older and we've had a little more time. Now we go to daily mass as much as possible. Um, I don't know. We it's just kind of intertwined. We don't really think about it a whole lot. So it's hard to put it out there, I yeah. guess. I think we've just been surrounded by good people too. We, we, we surround ourselves with, with, um, with, with good people that are living the faith as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so we've done a ton of retreats and small groups and just kind of throwing ourselves into, I said, you know, I said earlier, and especially early on, a lot of the stuff was kind of uncomfortable for me, but I knew I should do it. And, oh, yeah. and I was like, I'd force myself and kind of fake it until you make yeah. it. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I just knew there were, that it, it, I wanted it to be part of my life. I wanted it to be part of our marriage. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be part of our family. And really becoming a father for me was a pivotal moment. It's like, okay, it's go time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to, if they really, I've got to, ha- I got to have this to get this part of my life together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they're not going to believe it. They're not going to be, they're not going to want to follow the faith. So I recently did an episode on kind of these ideas I learned while hiking the mountains with these buddies. Okay. And there's an analogy I didn't quite finish, but I, I, I talk about the, you know, you are the closest, you know, the, the summer of your five closest friends, mm-hmm. but take this further that we were on an adventure together, right? So we were in the wilderness going on an adventure together. There is some metaphor, like let's use a life metaphor, right? You're going to go off into the woods. You're going to do this thing. And it happened to be that all four of us were very Catholic. And so we did morning prayer together. We did evening prayer together. We did night prayer together. We prayed rosaries together. We prayed throughout the whole day. It's like, now, just take that analogy and do it with your life. Like, you could choose any other three people to go with you on this on this journey. Mm-hmm. And, and if they're not those things, it's gonna the journey is going to look a lot different, right? So same thing with you and your marriage. You're saying we mm-hmm. not, not just you and your family, but then who you surrounded yourself with as friends, right? Absolutely. You guys brought the, the people you were probably intentional in choosing those friends and who to hang out with. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. So let's talk then about maybe some struggles you guys had or how you overcame them. You know, is there anything that sticks out to you? Is there a you know, bumpy point in your, in your marriage or something, uh, something you had to get over um, and how, how you did that? Dan's grinning. I know, so he's got something going on. I, I think that it's kind of an emotional thing for us. Yeah. Is um, we'd, we've had a few bumps. We had a couple miscarriages between yeah. our girls and then our boys. Those were tough. Um, but probably tougher was dealing with illnesses of yeah. our kids. Yeah. And first we had our daughter, um, when she was 10, she was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And that was terrifying for us. We didn't really know what we were getting into. Um, and then, uh, several years later, our son was diagnosed with epilepsy mm-hmm. and his has been a really, I mean, we're talking probably a dozen trips in the ambulance and, um, uh, brain bleed concussions, falls down the steps, um, over 400 grand mal seizures and probably thousands more little tiny ones. And so um, it's that's been hard. But I will say 
it just reminds me of the footprints in the sand and the fact that that is when we've been carried by those people that we've surrounded ourselves mm-hmm. with. And it's been such a blessing, our church, um, our community, but we really lean in on our faith. And I think in those times you can either fall apart and there were moments where we fell apart, but for some reason, not for some reason, I know why we, we really leaned into each other too. And Praise God for that. I mean, it's so easy to isolate and just kind of go in and think, I can't believe what I have to go through. But instead of um, kind of going on our own, we just kind of grabbed each other's hands and ran into it together. So it's interesting you mentioned the community, like helping you at that time. So we we joined Teams of Our Lady a few years back, and I all these people in this other team were tell, saying like how all these terrible things happened like the year they started and like how it was good to have this team there with them. Like, well, that's your guys' team. Like, we're all, like we're all good. And then sure enough, like we parents dying, mm-hmm. you know, siblings divorced, like all these things took place all within, you know, mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the, this team thing was the right time to have yeah. these people to do this with, because yeah, it's not, you know, when you're on an Island, it's not that easy. Right, so, right. Um, okay. So I, a thing that's going to come up a lot, I think. And when you have four kids, how do you balance, Work, kids, activities while prioritizing marriage. What what, what advice do you guys have for that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> good luck. Is that <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on pretty much. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I think the this has come up before in these conversations is that you can't do it. Like the world wants to tell you you can have it all. Oh, yeah. Right. And the world lies. Oh, yeah. The world's a liar. You know, <laughs> you can't, no. you, you can't have it all and you got to prioritize. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, and I think, um, you know, we've heard this, I've heard this, you know, from my, from my dad, from Jenny's parents too. just, you know, just go home, you know, like after work, just go home. Don't go to happy hour. You know, don't just home is where you need to be, mm-hmm. you know? And I think, Fortunately, we were raised that way mm-hmm. and you know, blessed very much that way. So that's first and foremost, always on, you know, okay, let's, our priority is there. It's with each other and it's there. Yeah. And, um, and so, and then everything else, there, some things are going to have to suffer. You know, there just are, yeah. you know, you just can't, you can't have it all. You yeah. can't do it all. We but, had a hard time fitting in dates and we'd always feel like we need a date night. Yeah. And still, you know, it's true. We still have a hard time every once in a while fitting in date nights. But when we do, we have just a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're sitting there talking about our kids, of course. Well, and and, lot, and even now, date night might be going to the store. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll go to Costco and Hy-Vee. And and we'll, I love Costco. That's and, and, speaking and, my language. I'll do this. And, it's so and, fun. And, and, and we'll have fun. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll we spend a, you know a couple hours and a half, two hours, and <laughs> we'll be laughing, having a great time. You know, these people are drunk at Costco again. Just, no, we, I know they should possible. give out samples for something good there. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they have. No, I, I think that's a, a piece of advice that I think is. You know that you, you you literally can't do it all, right? So if you want to be the best, you have the kids be the best musicians that can be, and be the best at all these sports that can be. And that's like there's there's not enough no. hours in a day nor time to do it. Especially, I mean, I've got six, number seven on the way. There's just yeah. it's physically an impossibility. So yeah. yeah, you have to you have to, and I would argue you have to figure out what the priorities are, and family should be first, right? So number one is is this family thing, mm-hmm. yeah. and then above and beyond that, when we have you know, and I would tell the kids this too, like you, our kids are a lot like us; they want to do a thousand things, like good luck we can't like mm-hmm. so we have to prioritize the things that we want to do and so obviously we got to prioritize our marriages um for Kristen and me so how what are some things you guys have learned from other great marriages that you've been around what are some of the like the, the tips and tricks or some of the things you've yeah. seen from other great marriages that you'd say hey you know listener to this radio show here's something that I, that has worked for us or that we've seen work really well yeah i i have to say the the one picture that is in my mind and burned in my brain forever and ever is my mom and dad every single night, no matter where we were, no matter what time we went to bed, they were kneeling by the bed together. Awesome. And it's just so beautiful. And and honestly, just now as I'm thinking about it, my dad's parents were the exact same way. So, it, I mean, just that beautiful visual. So they would do that every every, every night. night. Every, but every we go to bed. We go to bed way after our kids, though. Right. They would, so- well, and, you know, I guess I, I don't know how I always saw it. I mean, That's I remember great. it as a tiny kid. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, 
still till you know well jenny was valedictorian of our high school class so she was up late studying <laughs> yeah. every night so my wife was too we, that... we married up That's yeah. still, oh, again, yeah. next piece of advice marry up these yeah, are all things to that... say that stuff i listen i, I do it to christian all the time everyone knows that four sport athlete valedictorian three-time right, all-state right. She, she married uh, down so she doesn't want to talk about it because it's embarrassing so for her to have to talk. no <laughs> no no i and you know what i i think you, that is very sweet of you and dan does that too where he really builds me up. Um, and, and I'd like to believe that we build each other up. I saw that from my parents all the time that, you know, dad would always be like, Oh, your mom is so great at this. Mm. And so it, it, I think well, that I, I can think of nothing. More, I can think of nothing more toxic than, than saying something. I mean, I can't even imagine it, but you know, if you know, I'm sure it, ha- it does obviously happen, but to talk right. negatively of one spouse, like, right. you know, I remember my, uh, I'll, I'm sure I've mentioned this in the past. I mentioned in the future. My grandfather would always say, I don't care. You know, if they were talking back to my grandma, he said, I don't care how you talk to your mom, but don't you dare talk to my wife that way ever mm-hmm. again. So it's like, you know, that is a yeah. real thing. You know, the kids have to see that, right? right? So there's a level of modeling this out for the for the children. They have to be able to see the the, the lifting of you know each other up. And that's right. clearly, and it should be authentic, right? Mm-hmm. And so like the, the naturally, hopefully should happen. Other things that maybe, Dan, that you've, you've learned from other yeah. couples that are You know, helpful? not rocket science, yeah. but I, I'd say one of the things that always stuck with me, I went to, I, I, used, I was in this accountability group years ago, early on in that time where it was, that would have been uncomfortable for me to do it, but I forced myself to do it. I found older mentors and we went to this Wednesday morning, uh, it was Christian men's group. And the biggest piece I got from that, well, I got many pieces, but was was just having the attitude of of going to Jenny every day and just either at, outwardly asking her or just thinking about what I could do to lighten her load. Um, and a, around that time, we uh, decided to have Jenny stay home mm-hmm. with our after our second daughter was born, and which was a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. She was more the breadwinner than me at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, weren't sure if we we're going to be able to make it happen, but had enough savings. We're like, well, we can do it for a year at least. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, 25 <laughs> years later, no, I, whatever yeah, it 26 is. 26 years later. 26 years later. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, but that's, that's going back to that prioritization of family. You know, my, my dad has a similar story. I interviewed him on, um, for the heroic fatherhood series. And he talked about the decision. My, my, my mom was, on the fast track at John Deere mm-hmm. to shoot up the ladder at a young age. And they made a very conscious decision early on to, to pull her out and say, no. Nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, financially we could have retired probably 15 years ago. All of our friends are retired and he's still working. He's like, but it was the best decision we ever made. Yeah. And again, that goes back to that prioritization of family of putting the family first. Any final thoughts, mm-hmm. anything else you guys want to share that, that the, uh, you, you, you have all this wisdom and knowledge that you want to impart to a, a young listener or a person in the middle yeah. of their marriage now? Anything else, the final thoughts? You know, I think um, have, you know, it, it is so important to laugh and to laugh at yourself, mm-hmm. laugh, you know, mm-hmm. and joke and, and have fun. Yeah. You know, I think, I think what we've learned from our families is you can live the faith and have fun yeah. and you can have a healthy marriage and it can be fun. You know, it's that, it's that uh, joy of, of, of family life. Yeah. And it's and I think that's one of the biggest things we've we laugh a lot and we had mm-hmm. dance parties when our, we were young with our kids. We um, we just had a lot of fun. I, I completely agree. And Jenny's fun. So that makes well, it, that, that, that helps. That helps. <laughs> well, I think so. That's a great it's a great final thought. And that was actually that's this exhortation, this 1962 ex- exhortation. I started this series with talks about finding joy within a marriage. It's kind of the, the, the main theme of this deal. Is how do you find this joy? Yeah. It's going to be arduous. It's not going to be easy. But yeah. if you do it right and you do self-sacrificial love, you can find joy within it. And I think that's a beautiful way to, to end this because I think that is – marriage is not supposed to be a burden. It's supposed to be a gift. And even though we have hard times and we've got miscarriage and we have all these things, yeah. finding joy within that is, is really the secret sauce to a healthy marriage. So, Dan and Jenny, thanks for joining yeah. me today. Thank you. We are gonna, we're going to head to a short break, and we will be right back. All right. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from independent realtor Chris Foster. Chris has served clients with everything real estate throughout Iowa since 2019. 641-891-8178 or online at the number 4 saleia.com. 
Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at FastSigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support provided by Divine Treasures, a Catholic book and gift store serving the Des Moines community since 1992. Divine Treasures, 5701 Hickman Road, Des Moines, 515-255-5230. Thank you, Divine Treasures, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. My help comes from you. You're right here. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. My thanks again to Dan and Jenny Nielsen uh, for this first interview on the Heroic Marriages series. A few things that I want to uh, pull out of there. Um, so first off, Dan made a great point, and I think this is so it, it really encapsulates this entire thing about, you know, the self, self-sacrificial love and living joyfully, right? So I talk about Pope Francis's first exhortation on the joy of the gospel and living this joyful life. And Dan said he, that he was attracted to Jenny's parents and her grandparents who lived this authentically Catholic, joyful life. And I, I, I truly believe that is what we are called to do. We are called to to live heroically Catholic lives all the way in, you know, putting it, putting it first, primary, all the things, and to do it joyfully. And if there's one thing that we can pull out of this, right, there's one thing that out of this series um, that we can pull out. It's hopefully to to allow us to be inspired to live joyfully. I, their, the advice there at the end was great, too, about just having fun like this. Does, this is it is going to be difficult. It, it just is. Life is not easy. Life is difficult, um, but it can be joyful. And to take time to not take yourself so seriously. He mentioned the, the dancing part in the living room or whatever. I'm like. Yeah, like we when we do that, it's always great. Why don't I do this more often? Why don't I manufacture these fun these fun activities with the kids and the family more often, right? And I think that's something that we all we all can do, and maybe be a little more intentional. Going back to the first episode with John, maybe be more intentional about that instead of just you know doing it when they when they when they happen. Maybe thinking through how can I how can I increase the spontaneity uh, of this of the fun we're having as a family. Um, and then lastly, Dan had mentioned a few times that, you know, he was in these uncomfortable phases of joining accountability groups or going to prayer services or whatever these things are. And I, I remember that. I remember those days like, man, I'm going to a men's group. This is weird. What am I doing here? And men become, this is a very Jocko Willink thing to say, but become comfortable being uncomfortable um, and, and doing things that you know you should be doing in your marriage whether it's you know buying flowers or telling you know telling them how much you love them or going out of your way to, to to embarrass them in front of the kids with how much you love them whatever these things are or joining a men's group or do, joining a forge group or wh- whatever the thing is that's uncomfortable for you but you know it's right maybe that's time to do that and I love how how Dan said he kind of just embraced this kind of weird uncomfortability at the beginning of of his marriage in a lot of these Catholic circles and now it's just a part of who he is so. Um, that was a great, I couldn't think of a great first uh, interview. Uh, and I think that it really sets the stage. I think between, you know, John Bishop talking about this intentionality uh, in marriage and then parlaying that right next to this with this, this living, this joy of marriage. And you can hear them laughing. I, just, I love that. And I think that's maybe a call for all of us to, to increase the humor, increase the joy in our own marriages. So thank you for joining me today. I'm Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulus. It's time to Man Up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at goldenrulephc.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Catholic Tuition Organization. Reduce or eliminate your Iowa income tax and instead give to the Catholic Tuition Organization and receive 75% Iowa tax credits. These tax credits are going fast, so reserve yours today and learn more about the Catholic Tuition Organization at ctoiowa.org. ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their futures. Catholic Tuition Organization, a great investment in our kids. To all our family of listeners, we want to say thank you for your generous support during Iowa Catholic Radio's fall fundraiser. Your gifts make all the difference in ensuring the future of Iowa Catholic Radio. If you didn't get a chance to pledge, it's not too late, and matching dollars are still available. Donate now at iowacatholicradio.com to help continue this important work of connecting listeners to Christ. We are family. Again, thank you for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am one of your hosts, Matt Wilkham, along with your other host, Father P.J. McManus. How are you doing, Father? Excellent, Matt. How are you? Very good. How uh, I have to ask, how was your birthday? You know, um, my birthday always falls adjacent to the priest workshop, and the brothers are always very, very kind. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you had a good one. And uh, I won't ask you your age. Uh, I won't. I won't demand that of you here. I'm 42. Okay. And so the, the, the theme this year was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> I now have the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything. I just don't know the question yet. Okay. Well, the, the question here right now is, the what is the collect for this coming Sunday's liturgy, 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time? 